Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about how to find rules, especially rules that talk about when x is equal to 0. Sometimes y is not equal to 0. In this case right here, x is equal to 0 and y is not equal to 0. We've been doing a lot of graphs that start at x equals to 0 and y equals to 0. But there's a little bit of a trick with these. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here's our first one. Jamira wanted to start saving money each week. She started with $20 in her piggy bank. Find the rule that matches the graph and the table to show how much she saved each week. So one of the first things I want to point out here is we have all of our data graphed for us, which is awesome. We have some data that we need to fill in over here, but we can easily do that using the information in our graph. I want to point something out to you here. This is some interesting information. She started with $20 in her piggy bank. That means that when our time is zero, right here, she already has $20. We're going to come back to that momentarily when we write our rule. Let's see if we can figure out just how to start writing our rule. So we know that our rule is going to look something like this. So let's see if we can figure it out. We're going to try to figure out what m is, or the slope, or how much this graph is changing. What's the rate change? So let's start at our first dot here, which is when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 20. And we're going to go over to see how much it changes. So we're going to go over 1, because this is where our next data point is. And then we're going to go up to see how much it changes, so over and up. So it looks like it's going about 15. And I'm saying 15 because as I'm looking here, I can see that this dot is falling somewhere halfway between 30 and 40. And I'm going to check that, obviously. And so, but for now, let's just put it in there and see how it turns out. And we'll check it for the other things too, okay? Now let's see if this rule works so far with just the data that we have. So if we were to plug in um, our y, 20, so would we get 20 is equal to 15 times 0 because x is 0? Well, no, 20 is not equal to 15. But it's not that our, our, uh, our change rate is wrong. It's because we're missing a part of information here. So let's back up a second, and I'll show you what we're missing. Let's grab the big eraser. So do you remember back when we talked about how she's starting, Jamira is starting with $20 in her piggy bank? That means that when our time, and here it's in weeks, when that is equal to zero, right here, when time is equal to zero, She's not starting with anything in there. She already has $20. So we need to reflect that in our rule because every week she has that extra $20 in there. Okay? So our rule is actually going to look something like this. Notice that we tagged that 20 onto the end because when x is equal to 0, remember this is x and this is y, y is actually equal to 20. Now let's check to see if our rule works for our first data point here. So if we had, we should have 20, because that's our y value, is equal to 15 times 0 plus 20. So let's do some order of operations. 15 times 0 is 0, plus 20 is 20. So that would be true. That works for that. Let's erase that, and let's check it for our next data point to make sure that it makes sense. And I'm going to check it for the ones that I have information for both. So I'm going to go down to 2 and 50. So 50 is y, so I'm going to plug in 50 for y. So 50 should be equal to 15 times 2, because 2 is my x value, plus my 20. Some order of operations. 15 times 2 is 30. 30 plus 20 is 50. So indeed, that works out for that. That tells me that my rate that I'm changing by 15 was also correct. If it wasn't correct, I'd have to go back and sort that out to see if maybe it was 14 or 13 or 17 or whatever. I've checked it for both data points. I like to check it for a final one too, just to make sure that I'm on the right path because you never know. Generally speaking, when you check it for two data points, and everything works out fine and dandy, you're usually pretty good to go, but I'm always in the business of double-checking and triple-checking my work. 
let's plug in a 5 and plus 20. So a little bit of order of our operations here. 15 times 5 is 75, plus 20 would be 95, so that works. So let's fill in our missing numbers now so that we can complete our table with our rule. So now we're going to try to figure out what is exactly y. So we're looking for this here. So we don't know what it is, but we do know x. So 15 times 1 plus 20. 15 times 1 is 15 plus 20 would give us 35. And now you can see our rate change here. How much are we changing from here to here? When we increase by 1, we're going up by 15. When we increase by 1, we're going up by 15. That is reflected here as well. That's why our rate change over here, when we went over 1, we went up 15. Okay? Let's plug in our next one. Now we're going to do 3. 15 times 3 plus 20. That's 45 plus 20 would be 65. And finally, let's do a 4. 60 plus 20 would be 80. And if we were to look again at our rule, we would see that all of these, when you increase by 1, are increasing by 15 each time. And that is reflected on our graph here as well.